hey, it's the old man and the lady friend. Yeah, how are you? What do you got to say? Huh? What do you got to say? She's doing good. They got the good furniture out. And uh, no sunshine, but doing good. Um, hey, come on. Okay. I know what she wants. Here. Hey, get out of here. Get. Oh, now she's going to get caught up. Oh, come on. Come here. Look out. Out. Come here. Get over here. Damn. Oh, just a minute. Come here. That's funny. Now, just a minute. Here. Hold still. Oh, look out. Come here. Oh, in heaven's name. Oh, in heaven's name. Look out. Now, look out. Well. So anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> hey, shut up and get the hell out of here. We got a show to do here. That's right. Now you know it. Here. So, where was I? Um, Thanksgiving coming up tomorrow. I'm thankful. Um, I've told people if I died tomorrow, uh, I'd be okay with it. I mean, everything as far as I know is cool, but um, I did pretty much everything I wanted to do growing up and uh, doing okay. Hang on a second here. I'll end up pulling the whole thing over. There. So, Thanksgiving Day, thankful for Lady. Hey, get out of here. Competition. Um, what was I going to say? What? Oh, lady. Thankful for lady. I don't know if you can see that little dark ring on her neck there. Um, the other day I was out here cleaning up the pen, and behind me is her swimming pool. And uh, to clean it, I got to pick it up and move it, put it on side, and hose it out. Um, I flip it over. There's a rat. The body was this big, so with the tail it was that big. Lady killed it. She got underneath that thing, and she stuck her neck under that tub until she got a hold of it. And I flip it over, and here's this totally worked over rat. He's all pinched to heck, so yeah, on top of everything else, she's a good rat killer. That's right, aren't you? Here, I'll give you another treat here. There you go. Yeah, I was pretty impressed. Um, if you live on a farm, <laughs> you're bound to have mice and rats, and it's not like city rats. They're rats here eating nice cracked corn and egg-laying pellets and all this really good food that if the chickens don't get it all, they come out and clean up, so it's kind of an ongoing thing. They haven't had any for a while, but they'll probably be back sooner or later. That's right. That's right. She's all right. Yes, you are. Come here. Yeah. A good old friend. Come here. So, yeah, I wanted to thank uh, Kurt for kicking me in the butt and saying, hey, what are you doing? Why don't you get out and do a show? So here we are. Oops, do I have any more? A little bit left. Yeah, dandelions. No lettuce today, so we had to give her the natural stuff. Yeah, she likes that stuff. So, um... Yeah, here we are. Uh, yeah, Thanksgiving Day. Um, yeah, I'm thankful. Uh, things could be a lot worse. I'm still in the vertical club, as I call it. And for an older man, that's a good thing. Uh, Chris asked me to tell some stories about my cars I've had. Uh, and I said it before, without exaggeration, I bet I've owned... 300 cars in my lifetime or more. I mean, I was always turning rigs and um, yeah, make good money out of it. I used to, oh, I know it. Yeah. 
Uh, for years I had Studebaker was a good car. I had many of those. Um, Rambler station wagons, they were a favorite, and Rambler four-door sedans. Uh, international trucks by the score. Uh, then I got into Subarus and I've had many, many, many Subarus. Uh, like I can say I had a job where I drove, covered five different counties so I could do a lot of backyard shopping. And uh, anyone I saw with grass growing around it or looked abandoned, I'd stop and ask. In fact, I was down in the town of Granite Falls, I found one, and here's two axe holes in the hood. And uh, I asked the guy, I go, so what's up with that? And he goes, well, he gone through a divorce and things got kind of ugly. That's right. They can get ugly, huh? You okay? So I used some caulking and filled that holes up and painted over it. looked good. Nobody could tell nothing. But um, yeah, I could tell so many about cars. But the one I did want to talk about is a 1948 International bread truck. Um, the sliding door is kind of like a FedEx truck, but an old one, 1948. Uh, we had gone down to the city of Kent to the dog pound and uh, I don't even remember what for. This is when I was working at Lighthouse for the Blind, so it was a long time ago. But across the street from the pound was a boneyard, I'd call it, with, you know, six, eight foot fence all the way around it and a bunch of different trucks and machinery and this and that. And here's this 48 International bread van. And it caught my eye, so I talked to the oh, I got gotcha, you, uh, city worker about it, and he said, "Well, uh, someone had donated that to us 14 years ago, and uh, we never found any use for it." So he goes, "We can sell it to you, but we'll have to be a little creative." And he left it at that. He goes, "I'll get back with you in about a week." So uh, I immediately took ownership of it. <laughs> And Randy, that friend of mine and I, and a couple other guys, we went down on the night shift and hopped over the fence and brought in a hot battery and some gas and a uh, fuel filter and got it running. Um, it had sat, like I say, 14 years. I think it had 32,000 original miles on it. The gas pedal and stuff was all in good shape. In fact, you could drive it sitting down or standing up, either one of them. Um, so we'd gone down there a few nights and, and uh, got air in the tires and got it to run and drove it around in the yard a little bit and put it back where it was. And I'm pretty excited about it. Everything's looking good. Um, the day comes to get it. The city guy calls up and goes, hey, we got that title squared away. And how we'll do it is um, you donate $75 to the city of Kent and we'll donate this van to you um, it's cool so he set up a time he goes I'll meet you down there Friday afternoon whatever it was and uh, we pulled down there in Randy's 48 Plymouth and uh, get out of the rig and the guy goes you're gonna tow it home with that thing and I said well, I think we'll be okay and he hands me the keys and there was some keys in there already, so we didn't have to worry about that. So I walk in there, fire it up, and drove it out and waved. And those guys stood there with their jaw on the ground going, What in that Sam Hill? That thing's been sitting there all these years, and you drive it out? It was fun. Um, painted it with white house paint. I named it Casper and uh, drove it. I bought it in the spring <clears throat> and drove it all summer and then winter come around and it didn't have a heater so Randy and I installed a heater and um, even with that it was lacking I mean the defroster was the main thing to keep those big windows clear so any extra heat was you know not very much so come winter time I ended up selling it but I had a lot of fun with that rig and uh, yeah I wish that would have been a good picture of those guys standing there scratching their head when I just fired up and drive it out. Um, yeah, it's a good machine. Like I say, low miles, uh, interior was all in nice shape. Um, I don't remember, I was trying to think of how that driving, standing up thing worked, but I did it. I drove it out standing up and uh, got down the road and flipped the seat down and sat down and we cruised. It was fun. Oh, lady. 
Yeah, I've had a few. Um, another one that comes to mind is a 61 Citroen. I'll get pictures out and show you these things. Uh, bought it from a junkyard. Uh, Citroen's a French car and with a hydraulic system so you could a little flipper right on the side there you could raise it up to a foot and a half off the ground to two inches for like the freeway if you wanted to sit low uh, four-cylinder hemi with a four-speed on the column that was a screaming machine and it's one of the most comfortable cars i ever sat in the seats had i think it's called bolsters that grabbed your hips when you sat down it was a nice nice car but at the time, it was pre-internet days, and to get parts for it, you had to order them from France, and you had to write letters and certified checks and yada, yada, yada. Um, so it was pretty involved just to get a, a tune-up kit. Yeah, that's right, let alone a head gasket set. I ended up taking the head off and fixed that. Um, Good machine. I wish I would have kept it. It was a uh, screamer. You know I mean? Four speed, you could be going 60 in third gear, so it topped out easy, 110 if I wanted to take it that far. Huh, lady? So, um, with that, um, happy Thanksgiving. I'll, uh, you got to say anything, lady? Yeah, who'd ever thought a goose would kill a rat? And she did it. Didn't you? Did you? I know. I know. I know. You're okay. So, with that, happy trails, and we'll see you soon.